What bottle of bourbon is going to move on to the conference championship of bourbons? Let's find out. What is going on everybody? Nathan here with The Everyday Drinker bringing you guys a brand new video. Today we are going to be starting round number two of our NFL Bourbon Madness. On the screen right now you're going to see the 16 teams that have been eliminated and we are going to send a prayer to those 16 teams and thank them for their service for participating in this madness and unfortunately they were eliminated. Now you are going to see the 16 teams on the screen right now and we are going to say a prayer and thank them again for being part of this madness and we are going to see which eight out of those 16 bottles of bourbon are going to move on to the conference championship. Now a lot of people are asking questions, how do I know which is which? Well, we renumbered each respective bottle and team. So each team kept their same bourbon, but they have a different number. So I have absolutely no idea what bourbon corresponds with this bottle of bourbon or bourbon or bourbon, whatever is in these. So obviously our first round is going to be team number eight versus team number four. You guys are going to see what these teams are and their respected corners. And uh, let's go ahead, get our glasses. And uh, before we start this madness, make sure you drop that like if you are enjoying this series. Leave a comment down below if your team is still in here or if you're going to bandwagon a team. I want to know what team that it is that you're going to be bandwagoning. And if you're brand new, make sure you smash that subscribe button so that you don't miss the biggest bourbon event in all of YouTube, the Bourbon Super Bowl, which is going to be the last four teams going head to head to head to head to see which one is going to come out on top. So game number one of our one o'clock games is going to be team number four versus team number eight. We've got team four on the left and we've got team number eight on the right. All right, as always, we start left and then we'll go right, then we'll go left, and by the time the end of the video rolls around, I'll probably forget which way I started. So here we go. I do know we're starting on the left-hand side this time. So here we go, quick nose, and then it's all about the palate, everybody. So let's dig right on in. It's a nice nose. It's got a little bit of a heat to it. I'm finding a little bit of a brown sugar. There's a little touch of a maple in this. I like this nose. This is a very nice, pleasant nose. It smells like it's gonna be a little proofy. This is the first sip of the day. Oh yeah, it's warm going down. It's a little higher in that proof. I'd say in the like 120 range. Could be completely wrong. And could be a 90 proofer that just tastes really, really hot. But let's get into the one on the right. All right, so comparatively, the nose is completely different. It's just super, super mellow watered down compared to this one that was just super punchy and in your face. But I get a nice cherry note. There's a medicinal cherry note, a sweet candy, lots of sugar, a touch of an oak. Let's get in the palate. That is really good. That right there is really, really good. It's sweet. It's viscous. It lingers. It just holds your tongue. It brings this really nice vanilla. Almost has like this lemon cakiness that goes around with that. That's really good. And those legs are really, really thick. And I think we have two high proofy boys going head to head here. They're both really good, but team four has a little bit more of a burn going down compared to team eight. So with that said, we have our first one o'clock winner and that is going to be team number eight is moving on to the conference championship. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have game number two of our one o'clock games. And, uh, well, we've got 7-Eleven going up against each other. So uh, let's go get ourselves a big gulp cup, some popcorn, maybe some pizza at the 7-Eleven. Seven's going to go on the left. Get a little more in there. Why not, right? We get a little fun in here, right? Why not? And 11 is going to go on the right. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We started left-hand side last time. We're going right-hand side this time for game number two. Let's get into this nose. That's like a vanilla bomb. It's warm and inviting. It's got a really, really nice nose. You could dig your nose into that glass and not get any burn whatsoever. Kind of makes me think it's a lower proofer. <sighs> Compared to the left, it is definitely, definitely a little bit softer. 
It's got this grainy note in there. I get a little corn. It just tastes like it's watered down though too much. And uh, let's find out about left hand side here. Team number seven. A really nice grape note coming off of this. A beautiful grape note. Just like a lush like plum in there as well. It's got this like grape soda-iness that's really nice. Is it my favorite sip ever? No. But I do think that seven might be a little bit better than 11. I do, I do. I think number seven is better than 11. So that means that our second winner of the day, team number seven is moving on to the conference championship. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got game number three, our third one o'clock game. We've got team number five going up against team number two. Team number two is going to be on the right. Team number five is going to be on the left. I think we went left right now. We're on the left. So here we go. Let's get into this nose. If you guys are enjoying this, make sure you smash that like button. Let me know. And uh, this is always fun for me. These are always so, so fun. These big blinds like this. This has an earthy, musty, dusty, attic-y vibe going on for it. It smells like it's an older bottle, but I, I can't find much more out of it. I get a little peanutness. It's a dusty peanut. But it's really, really nice and enjoyable on the palate. It's warm and it's inviting. It's um, There's nothing harsh about this sip. Really makes me want to go back in for another one, but we can't because we got to go here on team number two. And uh, let's get another nose here. This one has a little bit more of like a painty, like a, a wet pink. Now I'm getting a little bit more of like a cherry note coming off of this. It's got a little bit of like a really thick molasses, not brown sugar, but just like the straight up just thick goopy molasses note coming off of this. Okay, all right. These are both decent sips. It's got to go to team number five. After that sip, first sip of two, team number five came in swinging hard and heavy and just a little bit better, just a little bit more well-rounded of a sip compared to two off of just that first sip. So team number five is moving on to the conference championship. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on our last one o'clock game of the day. We have team number one going up against team number nine. And we are gonna find out right now out of these one o'clock games, which one is moving on. We have had a really, really fun beginning of our afternoon. And uh, we are a couple of drinks in already. And we are getting ready for those four o'clock games, right? We're, we're be we we got to go run to the liquor store. We got to go get another six pack of those Miller Lights, right? But here we are. We have, again, number one on the left, number nine on the right. We went left, right, left. Now we're on the right. I'm still keeping track here. So that means we're on the right track. All right, here we go. That's a nice, warm, very, very approachable nose. I'm getting raspberries and strawberries off of this. Very light red fruits. I can't, it's a tongue twister right there. Light red fruits are very, very potent in this glass. Cheers. Wow, that is, the nose doesn't give that proofiness that this, this uh, bottle, whatever this is, has. But it's got a proofiness and it sits on your tongue and it just like, it's like pins and needles poking at your tongue. Give me these like little tiny like flavor blasts of just deliciousness. How do I explain what that really was? It's sweet. It's like a creme brulee almost. I'm getting that fruitiness, but I'm also getting that, that, that burnt sugary note coming off of this with a little bit of that vanilla cream. Really, really nice. It's gonna be a tough, tough game for number one if it doesn't compare at all to what team number nine's got going for it. This one is just, you're getting a little oakiness, you're getting that upfront like charry, a uh, touch of vanilla, there's a touch of a uh, burnt caramel going on. Let's get out of the palate though. This one tastes like it's finished. It tastes like it's finished in some kind of a wine barrel. I don't remember anything on like 
because we started doing this round number one was a bunch of months ago and I have absolutely no idea what's in any of these pours at the moment. And that tastes like it's a finish in some kind of a wine barrel. And it does not stack up to what team number nine's got going on for it. Yeah, number nine is 100%. I'm getting a nice peanut note. That is a really, really nice peanut, like, a really rich, creamy peanut butter. I'm getting that off a of nine now, and that is 100% moving on. Team number one, hitting the sack. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got team number 13 going up against team number three. And wouldn't you know, we've got SLB going up against Everyday Drinker. It's the battle of the beasts here, it seems like. And uh, SLB is going to get number three. And EDD is gonna get 13. SLB EDD. Maybe we'll do a collaboration one day. Who knows? I love Kurt. I love Trent. And they do great stuff over there. But I am fixing to take them down. But it's all about what the bourbon in the glass has to offer. So let's start. Oh, God. Now I can't remember. Left, right, left, right. Left? I think we're on left. We're starting on the SLB glass. Team number three. Okay. All right. Uh, this is your traditional, it's got an oaky presence coming through on it, but it's got that touch of a very nice sweetness that follows behind that, that gives it a little bit of a complexity. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a little SLB nod here on the glass. It's like Kurt giving you that little fun, um, like, info about it, but then Trenton going hard, giving you whatever this glass has to offer. And Kurt's just sitting there giving you fun, nonchalant, just notes, he giving you what he thinks it is, and Trenton's just like, this is, this is good or this is sucky. That's what Trenton does. And that's what this glass has, it's what it's giving you. It's giving you those soft notes, but then it's also giving you those harsh notes in the back end behind it. But it's really, really tasty on the palate. It is a tasty, tasty sip. It's brown sugar. It's oakiness. It's vanilla. There's a hint of a very nice maple that's coming through on that that I really, really enjoy. But we got to move on to the EDD glass. And the nose is nowhere comparable. As so, I'm nowhere comparable to what SLB has. Nah, but we've got a great community over here. They've got a great community over there. And uh, one day we'll get to where they're at. And, uh, you know, things will come through. And uh, cheers to you guys. It's a really, really nice palette. These are two heavy hitters on the palate. I wish I knew what these were. I really do because like I don't want to I don't want to have upsets, but upsets happen. And these are both so so good. And you guys are probably screaming at the screen right now because you know what they are and something's got to go. It's got it Team number three's got to move on. SLB glass has the better bourbon in there. Number three is moving on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are on our final four o'clock scheduled game. We've got team number 12 going up against team number 14. So here we go. Number 12 is on the left. Number 14 is on the right. And I think we went left, right, left, right, left. Now I think we're on the right. So let's dive in to whatever team number 14 is. All right. That's the Rio. And I pray for whatever Team 12 has because holy bajoli. One of my Patreons, Mike, said we need to make a shirt that says holy bajoli on it. And I think that that is what our trademark is going to be is holy bajoli because that is what the Penelope Rio is, is a holy bajoli. Okay, all right. So last time Penelope Rio, I believe, went up against the E.H. Taylor single barrel and it put it up to its test. It really, really did. It was a tough, tough battle with what that 
medicinal cherry with that beautiful oakiness that that E.H. Taylor single barrel had to offer. And I'll give it to whatever 12's got. It's got a really, really nice, just beautiful bourbon nose. But I don't know if the nose comparatively matches up with what this Penelope Rio has to offer. Because I've talked about it many times. Many, many, many times on what this bourbon does to me. And <clears throat> I know a lot of people love it. I know a lot of people hate it. And I'm one of those lovers, so I know what I'm getting myself into with this sip. So here we go. That is just so darn good. So darn good. Now I can imagine one of these that are over here that are already solidified into the conference championship can possibly take down the Penelope Rio because of the proof of what this bottle is at, at 98 proof. And some of these are probably barrel proof. So I can go ahead and possibly say that maybe one day these bourbons will take down this bottle right here. But I gotta see if this bottle, number 12, team number 12 can possibly take it down because I don't know. The nose is telling me no, but we gotta get in the pout. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. You guys are probably asking yourselves, how did I decide what goes up against what? I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I have these just randomly numbered sitting on one of my shelves back there and I put them on the bar top here and I just swirled them around on the table and I pushed them together to where I had two by two by two by two and whatever we had it lined up against each other in that row of two is what went up against each other so that's how we got team number 12 going up against team number 14 here and I'll tell you this right now. We got some. We got a proofy boy in team number twelve. Wow, that is decadent. Do we have an upset? Do we have an upset? Because my mouth is salivating like crazy, and it's almost like, do I want the dessert to move on because I know what it is, or do I do what's right? We're in a pickle here, ladies and gentlemen, and I think I need to do what's right. And with that, we've got team number 12. Whatever this is, is moving on to the conference championship. And I know you guys are happy about that because Penelope Rio is disqualified. Are you guys ready for some Sunday night football? Because that's what we got. We got team number 10 going up against team number 16. Team number 10 is going up on the left-hand side here. And team number 16 is going on the right. We got no idea again. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I got no idea what side we're supposed to be on. I think we're starting on the left here. So let's get into the nose. Earthy, dusty. There's a cherry. There's a fruitiness. I like this nose a lot. This is a really, really decadent, delicious, sweet, bourbony, wonderful nose. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. That gives you a really, really nice experience. But is it lackluster? You're getting those bourbon qualities, right? You're getting that really nice vanilla, but you're not getting much after that. So let's get into the glass on the right, which is team number 16. I can't remember half this stuff that I talk about here. So on the nose, not much different. I, I might go as far to say that the team on the left here, the nose is a little bit better than the one on the right. And it's got a little bit more of a proofy punch to it. But I don't know if it's a better sip. I really do think that the one on the left here is a better sip than the one on the right. I really do. Yeah, the, the one on the right here, it's it's hot and it's, it's got this like unnecessary quality on the tongue on the top of my tongue that I'm really not enjoying as much as I thought I would and with that team number 10 is moving on to the conference championship 
And team number 16 is disqualified. I don't know why I keep saying disqualified. It's eliminated. It's gonzo. It's dunzo. It's got nothing left in this competition. And uh, it tried its hardest. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for some Monday night football. Are you ready for some football? We've got team number 15 going up against team number 6. And at this point, I do know that the Dallas Cowboys made it into round number 2. And I can only hope and pray that one of these other bottles of bourbon took down those Dallas Cowboys. Because, well, as an Eagles fan, I despise the Dallas Cowboys. And I do know that round number one, we did lose the San Francisco 49ers. I believe they had a stag junior. And something took that down that we weren't expecting to. And well, with that said, we've got team 15 going up against team number six. And here we go. Team number six on the right, team number 15 on the left. And just like last time, I've got absolutely no idea where we're supposed to be, so I'm gonna go on the right. It's a very pleasant nose. It's got some earthy qualities to it. It's earthy, it's herbal. It's got some sweetness on that back end. And I'm getting a really nice oak. I don't know if we had a rye that made it into the second round, but this is the closest thing to a rye that we have had. So it gives me that effect that it could possibly be a rye or maybe even a higher rye bourbon. So let's move on to the left here. We've got team number 15, the last team that we are trying for the first time in round number two. You thought I was gonna sip it there, didn't you? We're just going in for the nose. It smells and it reminds me of the toffee crumble on top of like, like an apple pie in a way. There's some Fully notes coming off of this fruitiness warm it's just like toasted sugar it's so nice and you thought I was going for the sip again cheers I don't need to go on the one on the right here again team number six unfortunately does not even compare to team number 15 team number 15 is 100% moving on to the conference championship Ladies and gentlemen, we have our eight teams moving on to round number three. And let's give a round of applause to those teams right now. And those eight teams moving on to the conference championship game are as followed. Team number three. We've got team number five. We've got team number seven. Team number eight. Team number nine. Team number 10, team number 12, and team number 15. These eight teams are going to battle it out in the conference championship, and those final four teams are going to be playing for their chance at the Super Bowl, the Lombardi Bourbon Trophy. And the next episode will be out next week. Friday. So with that said, next Friday we are going to have the conference championship round and then the Friday before the Super Bowl we are going to have the biggest, baddest, most epic bourbon blind to date. The bourbon Super Bowl. The NFL craziness is going to ensue over here on the Everyday Drinker channel. And we're going to see what the best bottle of bourbon is with their respective team to move on and win the Super Bowl. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. This has been a long video, but if you enjoyed it and you're still here, drop that like. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, this has been Nathan with the Everyday Drinker. Cheers.